What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a Blender add-on for quickly adding moss to objects in your 3D space. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Mossify is a tool that's designed to help you really quickly add moss and other like growth objects to objects in your Blender models. So it lets you add leaves. Um, there, there's a ton of different stuff you can add using this tool. Um, and you can see how it's super detailed and um, it does a really good job of creating these kind of like mossy looks. And so there's a ton of different assets contained inside of here. Note that you do have options on the right hand side. You can either buy the full collection right here, which is gonna be over a hundred moss assets, or it's got the biomes broken out into individual. So if you only want like the grass biome or something like that, you can buy those individually as well. So I will link to this tool in the notes down below. No, note that that's an affiliate link and I did receive a co copy of this add-on to try out from the developer. I actually reached out to him because I really wanted to give it a try. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of how it works and uh, make sure you check out this page to get kind of an idea of what you can create using this tool. And so the first thing is this is an asset library, meaning you don't install it by going into your preferences and installing it as an add-on. Instead, you unzip the file and then you link it in your asset libraries. Um, so you just click the plus button and then you go find the folder that those assets are contained in and they show up in your asset browser. Make sure that you set this to append rather than um, append or reuse data when you do this. But once you've added this to the list, you can just save your preferences right here um, in order to access these assets. And so basically the way that this works is if you go into if you want to mossify, notice how there's a number of different biomes in here. And so like, for example, the clean forest biome is going to basically be a geometry node setup that's going to scatter this across your object. But um, depending on what you purchase, if you get the full thing, you're going to have access to all of these, right? The chaotic fall, the grass like, um, the ocean biome, all of those different biomes, as well as some additional assets in here that you can scatter on top of your object. If you were to just get the clean forest biome, you'd obviously just have access to the clean forest biome like this. But the way that you add it to your object is really simple. You just drag it on top of it and that's going to apply it to your object as a geometry node setup right here. And so notice how when you do that, when you select this moss right here um, and you look at it and I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because I have a subdivision um, surface modifier applied to my Suzanne model right here. But this is going to give you options for different things that you can do in here. So for example, you can adjust your moss density. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're adjusting your moss density is the viewport display is actually culling some of this moss out. And what that means is that means there's more moss in here than you're seeing. So just be aware of that. If you have this on 25% and then you crank this density way up, then what that's going to do is that's going to um, basically create way more um, pieces of moss than you need. And I'm going to jump over into material preview mode for right now, just so that we can kind of mess around with this without having um, to hear my computer heating up trying to render it in cycles. But you've got options in here to adjust things like the density of the moss. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up just so we can kind of see it. Um, but you've got the ability to adjust the density of the moss as well as the scale of the moss. So you can make this bigger or smaller like this. You can also set if it distributes this only on top of the object. Now, um, one thing to note with that is that's going to be set based on the, the angle of the faces. So that's why you're getting little moss pieces on the inside of the mouth and the ears is because some of those faces are facing upward as well. Um, but you do have the ability to put this just on top of an object if you want to do that. Um, so you also have the ability to distribute this via weight paint. All right, so notice there's an option in here to distribute moss via weight paint. And so what that's going to do is you can check this box right here and you can specify a weight paint group. And so basically that's going to reference a vertex group in here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into weight paint mode right here and I'm going to create a vertex group and I'm going to call it paint. You could also create that vertex group over here, um, but I'm going to paint on the surface. Well, if you reference that inside of the geometry node setup over here, so instead of saying group, we'd call this paint, it's going to reference that weight paint group right here. And you can actually use weight paint in order to set where the moss is going to be added in your object. 
like this. And you can come in here and you can adjust the noise that this is applied with. So if you don't want any noise and you just want it to kind of like generally apply that, you can set that scale to zero, or you can use this in order to kind of randomize where this is going to be placed. So depending on what you're trying to do with this, you can do either a weight paint or more of like a general scatter like this one. And so one of the cool things about this, and let's go ahead and let's add one of the other moss systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this moss system right here. And let's add, uh, let's go with one of the more magical looking ones. So maybe we go with the, oh, let's go with the actual magical one. So I'm gonna drag the magical biome on here like this. And what this is gonna do is this is going to place this on your object and notice how these are different assets that are being placed in here, but I'm gonna bring this density down. Well, one of the things you can do with this is you can add um, additional assets. So for example, say that I wanted to add um, maybe some of this magical strand in here. Notice how you can reference different collections. And so let's say that we wanted to add something from one of the other biomes in here. What you could do is you could go find that. And actually I'm gonna go with one of the extra assets and let's go with the shell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the shell into my scene like this, and I'm just gonna kind of move it out of the way. But notice how it brings this in as a collection. Well, now within this group, what I can do is I can reference that shell collection and it's going to add shells to this object. And then you can set the density of where these are going to be added in here. And you can also set the seed so notice how that's randomly placing this in different locations, but you can use this in order to quickly add in those other objects. And so there's some other interesting functions that I'm not gonna get way too far into right here. Like for example, the ability to add things like raindrops to your models. So I've not dug into those very much, but they definitely seem like they would, uh, they would definitely seem to have some really interesting options. But one thing I did kind of skip over that I don't want to skip over is I wanted to note that a lot of these assets that you bring in um, that are contained in the extra assets section are actually editable and adjustable. Meaning, um, say that you drag one of these in. So say that I wanted to work with this magical string right here. So I'm gonna drag the magical string in right here. And at the moment, this is kind of acting, that one actually has light coming off of it, it looks like, which is cool. Um, but when you bring this in, there's a box that's checked by default called instance. And so if you don't uncheck this box, then you're not gonna be able to edit this object. But if I uncheck the box for instance, notice how you can select each one of these little magical strings right here, and they actually have geometry node settings associated with them. So if I look at this right here, you can see that this is actually like generating and adding those magical strings in here, but you can adjust things like the particle density or the particle scale in here. Um, and those are actually going to adjust in your viewport itself. So same thing with like, let's say we brought in um, maybe the, let's go with the shell. So the shell is gonna come with a number of different shells inside of it, but if I make an adjustment to one of those shells, like this Geo Shell 1, you can adjust the rotation. Let me toggle the other ones off so that you can see this. Um, but you can adjust things like the rotation of the shell in here, like this. So these are actually being generated as geometry nodes um, inside of Blender, so it's like 100% customizable, which is super cool. But then, you can reference these. So for example, say that I've got my magical my magical biome in here, I could actually reference this uh, magical string object and it's gonna add those magical strings in here. Now I would probably wanna toggle off these collections that I brought in over here, um, but say that I wanted some of those magical strings to be included in here, I could reference that. I could also reference um, like the mushrooms or whatever you want, and it's going to add those inside of your collection. So, and you can kind of play around with the seed in here a bit to change what you're going to get in your scene. But um, just kind of a super cool collection of geometry node-based assets that you can actually change and adjust. Um, I'm actually fairly impressed with the level of stuff that's in here, and it actually looks really good when you render it out. And the speed is really awesome too. So for example, I'm going to toggle this all the way off so that my magical biome isn't actually doing anything, and I'm gonna bring in one of the others. So maybe the ocean biome. I'm just gonna drag that in here like this. And then I can adjust my density, 
my scale, all those different things. I could add in the shell collection. And I'm gonna bring that density up so that I actually get some shells placed in here. And just real quick, you can toggle up that viewport display amount in order to see everything that's in here. But then you could take this and you could render it out. But if we take a look at this result, which I did not spend a lot of time on, obviously this looks really good. It's got that kind of like seaweed look in here with the different seaweed parts and pieces. So overall, I am fairly impressed with the quality of what's contained in this add-on. It's super easy to apply these objects to models and they actually look good when you render them. So um, if you are creating anything that does require kind of like moss or anything like that, I definitely check this out. Um, I will link to it in the notes down below. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something that you'd be interested in? I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to this add-on in the notes down below if you do want to check it out. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.